Hello, uh, my name is Kelly Reed and I'm the Chief Operating Officer from Atlas Core. And today is our semi-finalist webinar. Um, we'll be getting started in just a few moments as we um, allow uh, other folks to, to join the webinar. Good morning again to anyone who's just joined us. We're going to wait about uh, another two minutes to let other folks join the webinar. This is the Atlas Core semi-finalist webinar. Perfect. Okay, well, I think we're going to get started again. Um, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to those of you across the world who have joined us today for Atlas Core semifinalist webinar. My name is Kelly Reed, and I'm the Chief Operating Officer at Atlas Core. And we wanted to take a little bit of time this morning to talk to you about the uh, semifinalist status, the process, the fellowship, what you can expect next, and to give you some time for questions at the end. Um, first of all, I'd like to congratulate all of you. Only about 40% of applicants from around the world become semifinalists. And if you've been invited to this webinar, um, then you are among that 40%. Um, again, for those of you who have been invited to this, you've been invited to this webinar because you have been invited to sign the semi-finalist agreement to confirm the following things. That you're available for a 12-month fellowship beginning in May of 2017. That you agree to the terms and conditions of the fellowship. You agree to pay the $500 participation fee upon arrival if you're selected as an Atlas Core Fellow for May of 2017. Oh, I am screen I'm sorry, I understand there's a problem with the screen share. Um, hold for a moment while we try to correct this. Okay. All right, I think that we've been able to correct this. So um, again, let me just review the last few things that I've mentioned. Um, so you've been invited to this webinar because you've been invited to sign the semi-finalist agreement to confirm that you are available for a 12-month fellowship in May of 2017. You agree to the terms and conditions of the fellowship. You agree to pay the $500 participation fee upon arrival in the United States if you're selected as a fellow. You're eligible for the J-1 trainee visa, and this is determined by offering a clear, uh, truthful, and complete um, uh, detailed record of your, your visa history and, and any um, immigration history on your application. Um, and you're committed to returning home following the fellowship in the United States. And finally, that you're open to being placed in any U.S. city. These are some of the terms of the semi-finalist agreement, which you should have all have received. Um, and you'll want to review that agreement closely to make sure that you're able to um, agree to all of these terms. If you confirm um, your status as a semi-finalist, 
um, then that means you'll be eligible um, for interviews with host organizations for the May 2017 class. If you agree to these terms um, and, uh, and later back out, it may affect your eligibility for future Atlas Core fellowships globally. So I'm going to give you a, a quick overview of our agenda for um, this presentation, this webinar today. Um, and I want to encourage you to be um, noting any questions you have during the presentation. Um, and if they are not answered later in the presentation, then you'll have an opportunity to type them into um, YouTube and um, have them answered at the end. So we'll begin with an overview of the Atlas Core Fellowship. We'll discuss the placement process briefly, um, and then we'll go over some helpful tips for semi-finalists and um, candidates who are interviewing with host organizations. Um, and then finally, we'll have an opportunity for some question and answer at the end of the webinar. Again, I encourage you to write down any questions that come up, and if they are not answered by subsequent slides in the presentation, you'll have an opportunity to ask those at the end. So to get things started, a little bit about our model. Atlas Core engages individuals, primarily social change professionals from around the world who are between 22 and 35 years old who hold university degrees as fellows in our um, long-term fellowship. During the 12-month fellowship, uh, fellows serve full time at host organizations in the nonprofit sector, private sector, public sector, academic, and government organizations as well. And their service is punctuated by in personal and virtual leadership development training, something that we call our Global Leadership Lab, which is designed and delivered in large part by Deloitte Consulting here in the United States. Um, and we expect to be complemented with a certificate from Georgetown University in late 2017. We know that when great talent and great ideas cross borders, everyone wins. So Atlas Core's mission is to develop leaders, strengthen organization, and promote innovation through an overseas fellowship of skilled social change professionals. So a few other details about the U.S. Fellowship. This is a year-long professional training fellowship. With only a few exceptions, all fellowships are intended to be 12 months. They begin in January, May, and September only. It is not possible to defer an offer to February or the following September. Um, offers are made at a point in time. It is possible to extend a fellowship up to 18 months at the request of your host organization. Um, the fellowship, as I mentioned, engaged, engages mid-career professionals who are committed to returning home to their country. The intention of this fellowship is to give global leaders a challenging professional exchange experience to learn best practices in the United States. And it's also intended to strengthen US-based organizations by connecting them with diverse and unique talent from around the world um, who will then return home to be partners and successful social change leaders in whatever field they choose. The fellowship, of course, um, is also in includes the host organization placement. Again, this is a full-time placement with a nonprofit, private, or public, or academic sector institution in the United States. These placements can be anywhere in the United States. Um, mostly our fellows serve in DC, New York, Chicago, San Francisco, Portland, um, Atlanta, possibly Boston, um, Denver, and Philadelphia in the coming year. The host organization's placements where fellows receive apprentice-style training where they learn by doing and share their expertise is complemented again by our Global Leadership Lab. This is over 200 hours of professional development that's delivered in person and virtually throughout the fellowship. All components of the Global Leadership Lab are a mandatory uh, requirement for all serving Atlas Core Fellows. Continuing our review of the US-based fellowship, 
I just want to touch briefly on some of the things that Atlas Core provides and what's considered the fellow's responsibility. So Atlas Core helps to match our semifinalists like you with host organizations across the United States. We'll discuss that in more detail in a little bit. We provide J-1 visa sponsorship. We do not um, provide J-2 visa sponsorships, which would allow um, selected fellows to bring their families with them to the United States. It's not something we're able to offer. Atlas Corps covers the international round trip airfare from your home country. And if you're placed outside of DC, we also cover airflare to return for the Global Leadership Lab immersions. We provide um, emergency travel and health insurance. This is not a standard health insurance policy, though it does cover most incidental and emergent uh, travel insurance needs. Atlas Corps provides a basic living stipend that's intended to cover shared housing, food, and local transportation only. Um, and we also convene the Global Leadership Lab. Again, about 200 hours of in-person and virtual training. So that's a little bit about what Atlas Core provides to um, our, our serving fellows. It's the fellow's responsibility um, to provide their full-time service with their host organization, to be committed to returning home, to invest their leadership skills and talents to strengthen their home communities. They um, contribute a $500 participation fee upon arrival in the United States. Um, it's their responsibility to bring funds to cover incidental expenses over the course of the fellowship. Again, the stipend is intended only to cover shared housing, uh, groceries, and local transportation. So many fellows find it necessary to bring additional funds to cover, um, uh, you know, um, uh, any incidental expenses that come up, um, going to concerts or um uh, eating out at restaurants or maybe taking a trip while they're in the United States or um, other incidental expenses um, like buying clothes or um, other things that come up over the course of the fellowship. Um, so it's also the fellow's responsibility to secure their housing, though Atlas Corps does provide support um, and uh, some connections to help fellows make that transition easier. And it's also the fellow's responsibility to make the most of this experience. The Atlas Core Fellowship is a mid-career fellowship. Um, this is an adult exchange program, and we expect that the um, fellows who join the program are uh, in a position to um, make the most of their fellowship. They understand their career goals and how the fellowship will fit into those career goals. They're able to negotiate themselves in a professional environment um, in order to drive their own professional development. And of course, the Atlas Core team um, and other support systems exist to help the fellows in being successful. But ultimately, it's the fellows' responsibility to make their fellowship um, a successful one and to get out of it what they came to get out of it. So just a few more um, key pieces that we want to make sure are clear um, and that all of our semifinalists understand when they're signing the semifinalist agreement. The stipend that Atlas Corps provides to fellows is intended only to cover shared housing, local transportation to and from your home and host organization, and groceries. So this is a volunteer fellowship. Fellows receive a significant amount of professional development training over the course of the fellowship, um, and uh, and they're they're volunteers. But Atlas Corps provides. Um, sufficient funds to cover these basic living expenses. Again, most fellows bring fifty to a hundred dollars per month to cover entertainment and emergencies um, and other incidental expenses like buying your favorite shampoo or sending gifts home to family um, or maybe taking a trip to a nearby city to to see more of the United States. We also want to make sure that you understand now, that it is not possible to bring your family with you. Um, the stipend is sufficient only to cover the basic expenses for one person. Um, Atlas Corps does not sponsor J-2 visas. 
Most fellows do receive a multi-entry visa, so it is possible to travel home to visit family during the course of your year-long fellowship or 18 months if you're invited to extend. Um, and this is an intensive professional experience. Fellows serve full-time with their host organizations. They often pursue networking and other learning opportunities outside of their host organization, in addition to being enrolled full-time in our 200-plus hour global leadership lab program. Um, so it's often not uh, a sustainable situation for um, folks to, to bring their family. Um, the other important piece that we wanted to mention is that Atlas Core, Atlas Core will help with the visa and we will sponsor it. But it's so important to be upfront about your travel and visa history on your application and any family that you have in the United States. We are only able to confirm the eligibility of candidates who um, provide a complete and accurate overview of their visa history. Um, and it's only when we are aware of past visa denials or potentially immigrant applications or family, um, current and ex-spouses in the United States that we're able to provide the support that would allow fellows to join the fellowship program. It's important to note that fellows who accept fellowship offers, who are lucky enough to get a fellowship offer and accept one, and, uh, and then aren't able to join the program because they didn't understand that they weren't going to be able to bring their family or they weren't completely honest about their visa history and are therefore ineligible, um, have often taken away an opportunity from another amazing global change leader from around the world. So it's so important that our semifinalists make sure they have up-to-date and accurate applications at every point in the process. Speaking of process, I wanted to talk a little bit about the placement process. This is often the most misunderstood component of the Atlas Core Fellowship. Atlas Core receives over 10,000 applications every year from 150 countries. Only 40% of those applicants become semifinalists. So you should all be very proud of yourselves and know that you're part a, of a very elite group of social change professionals from around the world. Only two to three percent of applicants will actually be given an Atlas Core uh, fellowship offer. So this is a highly competitive program and it's important that you have the information you need to make sure that you are um, the most eligible applicant um, and prepared for this opportunity should one be extended to you. So here's a little bit more about the placement process. It all starts with our host organizations. Host organizations from across the United States provide to Atlas Core a position description that details the learning opportunity for the fellow and how the fellow will be able to learn from an apprentice style placement with their organization where they serve full time, have substantive um, opportunities to contribute and are able to stretch beyond their comfort zone. Um, upon reviewing the position descriptions, uh, Atlas Core's partnerships team, Eben and Brittany, um, go through our application pool of semifinalists, including you and the other folks on this call and many, many others. There are about three to 400 semifinalists at any given point during the year to identify applications that have a strong match with what the host organization is looking for. We're looking for candidates who have enough experience to be able to contribute to their host organization and take advantage of the learning opportunities. This means that if an organization is looking for a monitoring and evaluation candidate, um, this might be an organization like Save the Children that many semifinalists are interested in serving with. Um, but if a semifinalist background is in communications, they're probably not going to be a good fit for this position. Um, and so their application won't be sent along to the host organization. Atlas Core shares the applications of candidates who are a strong fit based on the position description, and the host organization selects which semifinalists they intend to interview. Fellows can't be made a fellowship offer 
if they are not interviewed by the host organization. So this is an incredibly important component of the fellowship process. Um, candidates are uh, provided the position description to review in advance of the interview so that they can evaluate whether or not this fellowship opportunity um, fits within their career plans and their goals and objectives for joining the fellowship. Um, after the interview, the host organization selects the semifinalist who best, best matches their role. And if the fellow um, accepts the opportunity, then the pre-arrival process begins. Um, and Atlas Corps will reach out to successful candidates to talk them through the process. This is a complicated process, and I understand that you may have some questions. I'll try to um, preempt some of those questions as we go. But again, I encourage you to write down any questions you think of. And if they are not answered in another part of this presentation, you'll have an opportunity to ask them at the end. So here is a brief cross section of about 150 organizations that Atlas Core works with across the United States. Again, host organizations may be in any of the cities I mentioned before, as well as others. We're always expanding. Atlas Core has worked with about 150 organizations over its 10-year history. This is just a small number of those organizations. You'll see organizations represented here that with names that you know, like the American Red Cross or Care International, the Human Rights Campaign, Save the Children. You'll also see the names of organizations that you may never have heard of here, like Youth Service America, Centronia, um, Charity Navigator. Um, there is uh, no telling which type of organization um, a particular fellow will gain the most from. Uh, many fellows believe that serving at a large name organization with global brand recognition um, is the only option for them. Um, and we really challenge our um, Atlas Core fellows to think broadly about their experience. Often fellows placed at smaller organizations like Net Impact or Creative Associates um, find that they have more robust experiences and have a lot more opportunities to contribute and learn about the organization at every single level. Um, they're able to sit in on board meetings and speak directly to the CEO or the executive director every day, whereas fellows at larger institutions um, have a more restricted experience, which may be very valuable um, in the exposure and the name recognition and the quality of the work. But the real point here is that um, there are multiple types of host organizations and opportunities that are available to fellows. Um, and we hope that all of our candidates will keep an open mind about where they believe they'll be able to learn the most and achieve their goals for joining the fellowship. Here are a couple of other answers to frequently asked questions we hear from semi-finalists. <coughs> Placements are made based on a match of skills and experience. We regularly have candidates applying to the program who have a background in one area and are looking to transition to another. It's possible for semifinalists to be offered experiences like that. Perhaps you worked in development around poverty alleviation but would really like to move into women's empowerment. Um, and it's possible to find other fundraising opportunities in a new issue area, um, as long as you have the fundraising background that the host organization is looking for. Candidates looking to make a big change across an area where they don't have, into an area where they don't have a lot of experience, <clears throat> are often in a, uh, a more of a learning role and may have <clears throat> the opportunity to gain exposure to a lot of different areas within that field. But those placements are typically a bit more difficult. Um, these are mid-career um, placements. Um, they offer substantive opportunities to learn by having substantive opportunities to contribute. And if a field is entirely new to you, it is unlikely that you'll be able to contribute at a mid-career level and expand your skills. So it's important to be aware of how that matching piece works. It is very rare 
for a semifinalist to receive more than one offer from a host organization. As I said earlier, we receive 10,000 applications a year um, for about 100 positions. So the acceptance rate of the fellowship um, is very low, and most semifinalists um, may never receive an offer or an interview. So we hope that all of our semifinalists take any opportunity to interview with a host organization very seriously um, and think about how it might fit into their career plans. It is also fairly rare to receive an offer in the first class you are eligible. Many semifinalists remain in the pool for one, two, three, or more classes before they're invited to interview or extended an offer by a host organization. Some of our best fellows waited in the pool for two or three years even before being accepted as an Atlas Core Fellow. This is because it's incredibly important that the opportunity match the skills and experience of the fellows and be an opportunity that those fellows can grow and learn from um, at a fairly high level. Um, so we are not just matching uh, folks with any old opportunities. Um, and so this means that it can take some time before you're offered a fellowship. Offers cannot be deferred. If you sign the semifinalist agreement confirming that you understand the terms and conditions and you're available for a May placement, your application will be considered by host organizations across the United States. If you're offered a placement in May and are unable to join the fellowship, um, you may be deemed ineligible for future fellowships, and you will likely be unable to defer that offer until September. Our host organizations make plans around having fellows join their team on a particular timeline, and they're often unable to adjust that timeline. Again, classes begin in January, May, and September only. So if you're made an offer for the May class, um, but you know that you have a commitment in May and can't come until June, you will be ineligible for the May class. So please keep that in mind before you sign the semifinalist agreement. Semifinalists who do not reply to interview invites are permanently removed from eligibility for all Atlas Core programs globally. We assume that if we don't hear back from you at all, that you're no longer interested in the fellowship. And so your application will not be sent to any other future organizations. If you sign the um, semifinalist agreement and later realize that you won't be able to join the fellowship in May, please update us. Um, you're able to reach out to us via apply at atlascore.org. Um, and there are also other instructions in the semifinalist agreement about how to communicate that you are no longer eligible. If you find yourself to be no longer eligible for the May class and do not communicate that to us, um, those candidates will be removed from eligibility permanently for all Atlas Core programs globally. It's also important to know that just because we worked with an organization in the past, it does not mean we are currently placing fellows with them. Um, many fellows will say to us, well, you know, thank you for the invitation to interview at Nexus Global Youth Summit. I've never heard of that organization. I'd much rather serve at Ashoka or CARE. Um, that's interesting information, um, but it's not, we're not able to take requests in that way. Um, candidates are matched based on the needs of the host organization for that class and the skills and experience of the fellows. Um, I hope those FAQs are helpful to you and answered many of your questions. A little bit more information about the placement process. Um, again, we place fellows in January, May, and September. Our classes begin in January, May, and September. So for the May class, interviews with host organizations will begin in January of 2017 and run through February. Candidates will receive an offer and get a notification about whether or not they've been accepted or made an offer by approximately March 31st. And you can see here the timelines for other classes. <coughs> Excuse me. So I want to move on to some helpful tips. So starting with some general helpful tips. Read and respond to all emails from Atlas Core carefully and within 24 hours. You must sign the semifinalist agreement every four months to remain eligible for a placement. If you are not made an offer in May, 
you'll receive another invitation to sign the semifinalist agreement. You'll have an opportunity to review the terms and conditions again to make sure that this is something that you're able to commit to um, and confirm your eligibility for the September class. Please remember that many semifinalists remain in the pool for one or more classes um, before they are made an offer. You want to make sure that you keep your application up to date. And there are instructions emailed out to semifinalists about how to update their application. Again, please read and, and review carefully any correspondence from Atlas Core so that you can take advantage of um, those opportunities to update your application with um, additional work experience or any developments regarding your visa history, et cetera. You want to make sure that your application is truthful complete and accurate. Candidates who do not include all relevant information on their applications are permanently ineligible. So candidates who knowingly um, leave off key information about their visa histories, for example, or anything else that may affect their eligibility for the program are immediately removed and permanently ineligible for all Atlas Core global programs. Um, it's also really important that applications are a truthful and accurate reflection of your work and um, academic history. Um, if a candidate were to be less than truthful or embellish their experience, um, they may find themselves in a situation where they are not able to learn and grow um, and could, in fact, be dismissed from the program. Please also make sure that you fully understand all of the terms and conditions of the fellowship. There's a great deal of information in the semifinalist agreement and on our website, also in this webinar, that helps you understand some of these expectations of the fellowship. Um, a great deal of work is put into identifying prospective placements for fellows. Um, so it's very problematic when fellows aren't um, uh, clear on the expectations and have to drop out after an offer has been made, um, that often means that another fellow has missed out on that opportunity. Moving on to some more specific tips about placements, please think carefully and understand your goals for becoming an Atlas Core Fellow. Again, reply to all emails from Atlas Core within 24 hours. We have a medium-sized team, and you may receive emails from folks different in different departments on the team based on the nature of the communication. Um, but we encourage you to stay on top of your emails and apply reply within 24 hours so that you don't miss invitations to um, interview with host organizations. Please read carefully and consider the host organization's position description before accepting an interview. If you have reservations about a position or know that it doesn't match your goals for becoming an Atlas Core Fellow, you need to decline the offer to interview before um, you actually take the interview. Um, accepting an interview for a position that you have no intention of accepting if it's offered to you um, is a waste of time for you and for our host organization and possibly takes away an opportunity from another semifinalist. Um, if uh, do if uh, semifinalists who accept um, interviews that they have no intention of following through on um, are immediately removed from eligibility for all future global Atlas Core programs. Um, immediately communicate to Atlas Core if you have any reservations about accepting a placement. If you are open to a placement, you reviewed the position description, you accept the interview, and during the interview realize that perhaps this isn't the right placement for you. Email Atlas Core immediately so that we're able to communicate that to the host organization. Um, it, perhaps your application would still be forwarded to other host organizations that are considering that might be a better fit for you. Um, but if you don't let us know, then we won't have the opportunity to try to find a better fit for you. Do not accept an interview if you are not available to join the program for 12 months beginning in May of 2017. Um, candidates who accept interviews and are not available to join the program um, and don't agree to the terms and conditions, again, are permanently ineligible for all global programs. 
Communicate any and all updates regarding your availability to Atlas Core immediately. And do not reach out to prospective host organizations directly. All placements are arranged by Atlas Core. Um, so hopefully you found some of these tips and information helpful. Um, I'd like to open up the floor for any questions and answers um, now. And you're going to be able to type those into um, the um, uh, uh, YouTube link. So I'll wait a few uh, moments for any questions to be added on YouTube. Did you have questions? I don't know. Any questions. Yeah. Here, they're all here. I answered a couple. Okay, great. All right, so um, thank you so much for adding your questions over um, in the YouTube link. If you give me a moment, I'm going to read through them and try to answer them the best I can. Um, so we do have a question from a candidate about the eligibility regarding age. Um, so the cutoff for um, the fellowship is 35 years old. Um, so if you are over 35, I am afraid you're not eligible for the fellowship. Um, there are some exceptions um, to that based on specific programs, and we'll reach out to those candidates directly. Um, and again, just to clarify, um, eligible candidates would be 35 years or younger um, on the first day of the fellowship. We have had many um, fellows turn 36 during the program, and they are perfectly eligible. So all semifinalists are eligible until their 36th birthday to begin the fellowship. Um, and some other uh, participants in this webinar have expressed surprise that there's just a 2% selection rate for the fellowship. Um, it is a highly competitive program. And as the organization grows over time, um, we uh, do expect to both receive more applications and be placing more fellows. Um, but it is fundamentally a highly competitive program for the best global change leaders around the world. There's another question here about finding housing in the United States. Um, as I discussed early in the webinar, it is the fellow's responsibility to secure their housing in the United States. Atlas Corps provides support regarding housing, um, particularly here in the District of Columbia where um, there are several group houses for fellows, but ultimately it's the fellow's responsibility to secure their own housing. <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> So there is a, a question here about the matching process and a semifinalist who um, has confirmed their availability for previous classes asked if um, they were invited to interview with a host organization for um, a current class and were unavailable to, <coughs> um, to accept that offer. Um, would the uh, matching process start from scratch for a future class? And the answer is yes. As I discussed several times in this webinar, um, host organization placements are uh, time specific and cannot be deferred. 
So just because you were given an interview in the past doesn't mean that you'll be invited to interview again. The needs of organizations change over time, um, and so the matching process will begin fresh with every class. And candidates who sign the semifinalist agreement um, and then back out because they are not, in fact, available or eligible for that class may be considered ineligible for future classes. So please think carefully um, uh, and communicate uh, truthfully and honestly your availability for the May class. So other uh, participants in this webinar have asked about um, trips to the United States. Um, that they're planning after they had completed their application for conferences or or maybe holiday All that is fine and shouldn't have any impact on your application or your eligibility for the fellowship um, Travel to the US or uh, visa or immigration concerns that would impact your eligibility for the fellowship um, would include um, applying for um, any sort of permanent um, residency in the United States, um, a denial of a visa to the United States for any reason, or um, <clears throat> potentially visa denials to other countries. Um, those are factors that would have an impact on uh, a semifinalist eligibility for um, the fellowship. But routine holiday travel or travel for a conference um, is perfectly acceptable and, and wouldn't have any impact on your eligibility. So um, another participant seems to have misunderstood a comment I made and asks if candidates with a communication background wouldn't be a good fit for a host organization. That is not true. Um, this is in reference to an example I made um, where an organization was looking for a fellow with a background in monitoring and evaluation. If a candidate had a background in communications, they wouldn't be a good fit for a monitoring and evaluation position. Atlas Core places many fellows who serve in communications, marketing, and social media roles, um, and many host organizations across the country. We never know what skills or experience or regional or linguistic preferences our host organizations will have in advance. Um, so we uh, get position descriptions from them and then move to the pool to identify candidates that would be a strong fit. Um, and so another candidate has asked a question. I'm not sure I understand, but it's from a, a the question is around whether metal, medical doctors and other professionals whose roles may not seem to be office related, but are nevertheless interested in such exposure. Um, so we've had several doctors um, be engaged in the program. This program is largely for social change leaders um, who may be medical professionals working in public health or um, intend to work to improve their communities in some way or another. We also have folks with business backgrounds, um, MBAs, um, who intend to spend their career in the private sector but want to be good citizens and foster change in their communities. Um, all of these people are eligible for the fellowship and matches are made based on the needs of the host organization. Um, the other thing I'll say is that many fellows come to the program with a great deal of field experience, whether that's in a hospital or working in a refugee camp. Most placements in the United States are office-based positions, and this is sometimes surprising and an adjustment for fellows, but there um, is not a lot of frontline development work that goes on in the United States. Um, though some fellows working on domestic issues may have more public facing roles interacting with the community more regularly, but most, almost all placements are office based. <clears throat> Okay, I'm just reviewing a few more of these questions that don't seem to be questions. Um, so someone has asked what the maximum weight is before a candidate would be selected by a host organization. 
Um, we know that uh, we've had fellows who have been in the pool for three or four years before they're selected by a host organization. It's really up to the candidate how long they'd like to wait for a placement um, and how long they themselves remain eligible if they age out of the program or find another opportunity. Um, this is a highly competitive program and because it's mid-career, the focus is on um, very strong matches. So we need to make sure that the host organization's um, needs, uh, their, the training opportunity they have to offer is something that will actually you know, improve the skills and um, uh, leadership potential of the fellow in question. Um, and that is a, a tricky match to make. Um, but uh, when it's made well, it's, it's very effective for both the host organization and the long-term um, professional growth and development of the fellow. So I just saw a question that seems to have skipped by um, about the America Solidaria program that is um, offered only once a year um, and it's typically offered in September. Of course candidates from all around the world um, are eligible to be placed at any point in any of our classes so we encourage candidates from around the world to apply and maintain their eligibility um, year-round um, to give them the maximum opportunity to find um, the right match. <clears throat> um, another candidate has uh, um, asked whether or not a change in their professional experience since the time of their application could affect their um, uh, eligibility for the uh, May 2017 fellowship class. And um, the answer to that is yes, it could. Um, there are our instructions in previous communications about how to update your application, and we encourage you to do that. Um, the more we know about your background and experience, the better the chances that we'll be able to find a host organization that matches that experience. So we encourage you to update your application. So another candidate has asked about the timeline um, and states that the timeline for interviewing with a host organization is August to September with offers made in November. That is true for the January class. Our January class has already been selected um, and they'll be arriving in January and beginning in January we'll start on placements for the May class. So um, if you haven't already been made an offer to join the fellowship, then you are not going to be coming in January, and our focus should be on the May class. So beginning in January and through February, um, current semifinalists will be invited to interview, and the outcome of those interviews will be communicated on or before March 31st. So some other um, uh, participants in this webinar have asked about placements in other countries. Um, it is true that Atlas Core is expanding globally. We currently have our first fellow from Kenya serving in Australia with the Foundation for Young Australians. Um, that global expansion is uh, something we're working very hard on. Um, we also uh, send English teaching fellows to Colombia. So folks who are native English speakers or have native near native fluency are eligible to join our teaching fellowship in Colombia. Um, we may be expanding um, to Malaysia with a similar teaching fellowship. Um, and these are all opportunities that can be um, uh, learned. You can learn more about these opportunities on our website um, and indicate your openness to being placed in Australia, Colombia, Malaysia, and any other countries that are offered in the future. Um, on the application. This webinar is specifically about our U.S. program. Uh, 
Um, another uh, participant has asked if a fellow can visit their home country during the fellowship. If yes, then after what period? So as I explained during the webinar, um, we do request multi-entry visas for fellows um, to join the program. It's up to the consular official whether or not they're given a multi-entry visa. Um, most fellows are. Um, if a fellow receives a multi-entry visa, it's very easy for them to return home during the fellowship to visit their family. There aren't restrictions on um, when that can happen. Um, there are restrictions on how long. Um, most fellows are given uh, 10 days of vacation time by their host organization. So trips of up to 10 days would be acceptable, um, or two, two weeks to, uh, for, to include 10 business days. Um, but that would be the fellow's, uh, you know, only vacation time, which is something to consider. Um, the other part of this question was, after what period would they be eligible to travel back to their home country? Again, there's no actual restriction on this, but it would be a, um, it would probably not be in the best interest of the fellowship placement for a fellow to travel home for a long vacation in the first four months. If a family member is getting married um, and during your second month of your fellowship, that'd be something you'd want to discuss with your host organization and get permission in advance. Um, those things can't be moved and uh, oftentimes are a way to work around those. Um, but it is something you'd want to be proactive in your communication about um, and professional. <clears throat> Um, another participant has asked if there are professional networks that may enhance a profile or acceptability. Um, this is a question we receive fairly often um, about how candidates can improve their, um, their chances of being placed. Um, there's no single network. Um, this is uh, a matching process, so it often simply depends on the um, needs of the host organization and the skills and experience of the fellows. We do encourage all semifinalists to um, prepare a professional LinkedIn profile um, and make sure that that's always up to date. Um, oftentimes, host organizations will check LinkedIn profiles. Um, we also encourage uh, candidates to make sure that their applications are complete and accurate, accurately reflect their skills and experience, that they don't um, skip any potentially valuable experience or skills, and they don't overstate any experience or skills. Um, so those are some of the best ways to make sure that the right opportunity finds you. Um, the other thing I would encourage is to be very diligent about replying to emails promptly. Um, it's always a shame when a really great candidate who matches a host organization's need um, just never replies to the invitation to interview. <clears throat> so another uh, participant has asked, um, that uh, about World Vision, a current one of our host organizations, and says that they've seen a call for the internship, um, which is a bit confusing. Um, the Atlas, this is a fellowship, it is not an internship, so I'm not quite sure what you're um, uh, referring to. Um, but the question is can I apply personally or should I wait to hear from Atlas Core? So all of Atlas Core's uh, candidates come through our common application, which you've all completed if you were invited to this interview. Any other fellowships or internship opportunities you see coming out from any of our host organizations are going to be separate um, and not a part of the Atlas Core Fellowship. As I said during this webinar, all placements and matches are made directly through Atlas Core, and so candidates should not ever reach out to potential host organizations directly. All invitations to interview will come from Atlas Core. Candidates that reach out to host organizations directly um, to inquire about fellowship placements are permanently removed from eligibility for all global programs. It seems to me like, um, uh, most of the questions in 
the uh, YouTube link have been answered. Um, hope, hopefully you found this uh, webinar helpful and instructive and it's answered some of your questions. Um, we are going to be wrapping up in just the next uh, 60 seconds, um, but I'll stay on the uh, YouTube channel to answer any more questions that come in in about the next five minutes. Um, so if you do have any other questions, please feel free to um, continue to type in the link. Um, following the end of the webinar. So again, thank you all for participating today. Your engagement in a webinar like this um, is a good sign that you're committed to the fellowship and, uh, and that you'll be able to have the information you need to take advantage of an opportunity when one is presented to you. Um, and congratulations also on being selected as a semi-finalist. Um, as I said before, um, less than 40% of all applicants make it to this stage. So you should be uh, very proud of yourself and understand that you're part of a global community of some of the best social change leaders. Um, and with that, um, I'll thank you all again for your participation um, and wish you the best of luck in your search for professional development and your work to make positive social change in your communities. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll be in touch and be greeting some of you here in the United States as Atlas Core Fellows in the um, coming year.